I, I can't get away from this thought and I just want to be uh, minding the Lord and until he comes, he may come for me today and I'd like to go out of here minding him knowing that I've minded the Lord. We've been preaching on the thought for some time now, where is the Lord God of Elijah? And uh, we've been looking at him in Elijah's life, started out there with Elisha and we're going to go on now in the life of Elisha and uh, answer the question, where is the Lord God of Elijah? If you have your Bibles, look at the Second Kings uh, chapter number 2 and verse number 12. Uh, the Bible talked about uh, uh, Elijah going up in verse number 11. Elisha saw it in verse 12 and he cried, My father, my father, the chariot of Israel and the horsemen thereof. And he saw him no more. And he took hold of his own clothes and he rent them in two pieces. And he took up also the mantle of Elijah that fell from him and went back and stood by the bank of Jordan. And he took the mantle of Elijah that fell from him and smote the waters and said, where is the Lord God of Elijah? And when he had also smitten the waters, they parted hither and thither and Elisha went over. Sometimes I think we read the Bible and we fail to enter in to what's going on. I, I think about when you go out Carter's Valley there, go out of Sullivan County into Hawkins County, there's a river down there that, that gets up at times. At times it'll get plumb out in the road that goes down alongside the river. The road will be impassable. And I wonder how many people would sit up and pay attention if I was to take a mantle and just wrap it up and hit the river and cry, where is the Lord God of Elijah? And shoo, dry land. I'm telling you, beloved, listen. We're even more blessed in this generation than they are in that generation. If you'll listen to me, if we'll read the word of God and believe the word of God, then we're operating by something that's called faith. How many believes this happened just like the Bible said it happened? How many believes there was a, a fiery chariot that came down for Elijah just like the Bible said that? How many believes that Enoch was walking with God one day and old brother Mays Jackson said God looked over to Enoch and said, you know Enoch, it's closer to my house than it is yours. And they just went to God's house that day. The Bible said Enoch was, and he was not. How many believes that God prepared a great fish for Jonah? That backslid preacher, amen. Never shall forget that Bible school and that little four-year-old boy. I said, that, 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 that whale, that, that great fish there, it came up there on the shore, and I said, he did something. What did he do? That little boy's like this. He reminds you of Warner. I said, what did he do? He said, he throwed up. Amen. I'm going to tell you something right now. The stories in the Bible are real to me. I've never seen him die, Brother Ralph. But I can close my eyes and hear the hammer driving the nails in his hand driving the nails in his feet. I can hear the crowd, Brother Steve, crying, crucify him, crucify him. I can hear people saying, he saved others, himself he cannot save. All I'm trying to say this morning, where is the Lord God of Elijah? Why don't we see more of him today? I tell you why, we don't spend more time in this book. Because the faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Faith ain't going to come from Channel 5. Faith ain't going to come from Fox News. Faith ain't going to come from CNN. Somebody help me. We need to get in the Bible, but we don't need to just read over it. We need to read in and, and let God speak to our hearts. The God that spoke the world into existence. Let there be light. There was light. 
I'm telling you, that's the God I serve. And that's the God that's coming again. Choir sang, the king is coming. I want to look at this thought this morning and give you four things with the help of the Lord out of the remainder of this chapter, chapter number two, on where is the Lord God of Elijah. Father, thank you this morning for each one that's come this way today. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for the Holy Spirit of the living God. Thank you, Lord, that we know in our heart that, Lord, this happened just like you said it happened. Lord, you said that God cannot lie. You didn't give us a Bible, Lord, that's not trustworthy. You gave us the word of the living God. And, Lord, I'm so glad it's true. Lord, every word of God is pure as silver tried in a furnace of earth seven times, so it's preserved every generation. And I pray, Father, today that you would help us as we look into the scripture now. Speak to the heart, Lord, of each one that's here today. I pray, Lord, you'd be especially with Sister Jerry this morning, Lord, and touch her back. Lord, she's so faithful, and I know she'd love to be here. I pray, Lord, especially for Sister Helen, Lord, that you'd touch her and healer, Lord, Brother Dwayne's wife over, and I see you again. I pray, God, you'd help her this day. Lord, we pray that you'd bless our visitors, and Lord, I pray that we'd just all be able to glean something that would help us in our lives to be more like you. Lord, save the lost. Strengthen your children. God will give you glory in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. I want to look at four times here in the remainder of this chapter. When we started the series of messages, we started in chapter 2 and we, we saw the Lord God of Elijah at Bethel and we saw him at Jordan and we saw him at Jericho. And uh, now Elijah's gone home and Elisha has cried, where is the Lord God of Elijah? He's taken the mantle from Elijah. I'm going to tell you something right now. It blesses every preacher's heart to know that as long as as there's a time here in this world, God will have a man that'll take the mantle. There'll come a day, beloved, when I'll go home, but God will have a man to take the mantle and preach the precious word of God. And that's a blessing in my soul. How does the Lord God appear in this chapter when Elijah or Elisha asks the question, and I'll have a hard time with that. I always do preaching uh, with Elijah and Elisha saying the right name, amen. But how does he appear to Elisha in this uh, chapter? I'll give you four things quickly. Number one, he appears in reflection. You say, preacher, what do you mean? Look at verse number 14 with me. He took the mantle of Elijah that fell from him and he smote the waters. And he said, where is the Lord God of Elijah? And when he had also smitten the waters, he par they parted hither and thither and Elisha went over. And when the sons of the prophets, which were to view at Jericho, saw him, Listen to what they said. They said, the spirit of Elijah doth rest on Elisha. You say, preacher, what do you mean he appears in reflection? Beloved, there was something about Elisha that reminded them of Elijah. How many understands what I just said? Uh, Brother Brian, in Sunday school this morning, you talked about our loved ones, maybe our dad or maybe our mom or maybe something that stuck out in our mind. Usually those things that stick out, listen to me carefully now, are things that remind us of our Savior, that remind us of the Lord Jesus Christ. You and I are to be a reflection in this world of his grace. We that are saved by the grace of God should be a reflection of his mercy, a reflection of his love. As someone said, and I, I learned this years ago, and I thought it was, you know, when I go out at night, and uh, we call it a moonlit night. How many's ever been out on a moonlit night? I, 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 I've come out of the woods when you didn't need a flashlight. I went into the woods when you didn't need a flashlight because it was what we call a moonlit night. But actually the moon wasn't lighting anything. Actually it was the sun because the moon couldn't do anything without the sun shining on it. So the sun was shining on the moon, the moon was shining on the earth. Honey, the son of God ought to be shining in our lives and we ought to be shining on the earth that others might see him in our lives. I mean, that, that's what Christianity is. And here, they, they, when they looked at Elisha, they said the spirit 
of Elijah. Now listen to me, I'm not changing the Bible, but what they're actually saying is the same spirit that was on Elijah is in Elisha and you and I know that that spirit was the spirit of the living God. And beloved, you and I are in a generation years and years and years and centuries and centuries after that, but it's still what we need in this generation is to have the spirit of the living God shining on our lives. That they might say, where is the Lord God of Elijah? And the spirit of Elijah doth rest on Elisha. I thought about this, and, and you've maybe heard this before. I, I, I read up on it a little bit, but and actually, it started out as kind of a tale, and a lady that I read after actually called a silversmith, and he said, it's true. He, he said that the, the object of the purifying and refining the silver is to heat the silver until you can see your reflection the dross goes, goes away and it's scooped off of the top and, and, and it's an art and if you get it too hot then it gets too much oxygen in it and, and then it makes it to where it doesn't make a good pour. But beloved, just about the time that that silversmith can see his reflection in that silver, that tells him that's just right. It's time to take it off of the fire. Sometimes you and I go through the fire. Listen to me carefully. It's so help you, beloved. We're not home yet. We're gonna face some trials in this world. And sometimes God is allowing us to go through the fire just so that we can be a, a greater reflection of the Lord Jesus Christ that lives on the inside of us. The Bible said you're the light of the world. He appears in reflection. Let me give you this. Secondly, he appears in the chapter in instruction. A lot of people don't think about instruction and God going hand in hand. Let me ask you this. Where would you be without his instruction? Where would I be without his instruction? Brother Wayne, I used to tell the men in jail all the time, in the prisons all the time, that your problem started with a lack of respect for the authority that God put in your life. Either you didn't respect your dad or your mom or, and most of the time it's a single parent home and it's a struggle. Uh, listen, you didn't respect the school teacher. You didn't respect the principal. Then there come a day you didn't respect the law officer. God put authority. God put instruction in your life and yet you would not have it. And look where you're at. I'm telling you, beloved, listen, there's a rebel in every one of us. Somebody help me that doesn't want to be told what to do. But in the chapter, we see God, the God of Elijah being reflected in the instruction. Look in verse number 16. They said unto him, behold now, there be with thy servants 50 strong men. Let them go, we pray thee, and seek thy master. Let's peradventure the spirit of the Lord had taken him up and cast him upon some mountain or into some valley. And he said, ye shall not sin. What they're wanting to do now is go look for Elijah. Just in case, Brother Rose, he didn't go all the way to heaven in that chariot. They just took him up on the mountain and dropped him, amen? And Elisha says, listen, I'm paraphrasing, you're wasting your time. Don't go. Have you as a parent ever felt like you're wasting your time? Listen to me. Instruction. I'm gonna tell you something right now. Listen, we need instruction and we need to see that instruction not as coming from mom, not as coming from dad, not as coming from the police officer, not as coming from the law, but as coming from the God of heaven. He's given us instruction. And the word of God's talking about here in verse 17, when they urged him till he was ashamed. They kept on and kept on and kept on. Let me just say this about keeping on. You ask enough people, enough times, and somebody will give you the answer that you want to your question. But beloved, if you ask God and get in God's word, God will give you the answer. He'll give you the instruction that's right. The instruction that will help you. Beloved, listen to what the Bible said. They urged him till he was ashamed. He said, sin. So they sent therefore 50 men, and they sought three days, but they found him not. How many of us could have told them before they ever left? You're wasting your time. Don't go. And the Bible said in verse 18, 
And when they came again to him, for he tarried at Jericho, he said unto them, did I not say unto you, go not? Now listen to me. This will help us this morning if we'll get a hold of this. Where is the Lord God of Elijah? Where is the Lord God of Elijah? Right here in this whole book. Listen, I didn't know what Brother Brian was gonna teach this morning. He didn't know what I was gonna preach. But I want you to listen to some verses this morning, beloved, that come out of the word of God. There are two classes of people in the world. Listen to me. I'm not being mean, I'm being truthful. There are those that refuse instruction and those that receive instruction. Those that that understand that they don't know it all and they need somebody to instruct them and those that think they know everything and need no instruction from anywhere else. Those, these right here are typical of that. Psalm 50 verse seven, hear, O my people, and I will speak. O Israel, and I will testify against thee. I am God, even thy God. This is God's people. I will not reprove thee for thy sacrifices or thy burnt offerings to have, that, to have been continually before me. I will take no bullock out of thy house, nor he goats out of thy fields, for every beast of the forest is mine, and the cattle upon a thousand hills. I know all the fowls of the mountains, and the wild beasts of the field are mine. If I were hungry, I would not tell thee, for the world is mine, and the fullness thereof. Will I eat the flesh of bulls, or drink the blood of goats? Offer unto God thanksgiving, and pay thy vows, Uh, unto the most high and call upon me in the day of trouble and I will deliver thee and thou shalt glorify me but unto the wicked God saith what hast thou to do uh, to declare my statutes or, or that thou shouldest take my covenant in thy mouth seeing thou hatest instruction and casteth my words behind thee. I'm telling you beloved listen I would to God that I were a teenager again and understood what's before me this morning that those were not just the words of my father but those were the words of the God of heaven when he was instructing me in the right way. Where is the Lord God of Elijah? You can find him in instruction. The Bible said the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. But fools despise wisdom and instruction. I'm not trying to be mean this morning, but I want everybody to listen to me. If we don't want to hear God's word, God said you're a fool. If we don't want to be instructed and see that God is in the instruction, beloved, God said, We're a fool. The Bible said he shall die without instruction and in the greatness of his folly he shall go astray. People are gonna die today while we're in church. Every second they're dropping off into eternity. There there are gonna be two kinds of people dropping off into eternity. Those that received instruction and those that despised instruction. Those that refused instruction. You say, preacher, it can't be that simple. Yes, it is. You say, preacher, what happened? How in the world did we get in this mess? I'll tell you how. There was a man in the Garden of Eden called Adam. And there was a woman in the Garden of Eden called Eve. And they had two sets of instructions. One was from God. And one was from the serpent, the old devil. And they went with the wrong set of instructions. And it plunged the whole human race into sin. That's why you don't have to teach a child to lie. You leave a child alone and that child will be lying before it ever gets out of diapers. You don't have to teach a child to be mean. Brother Lance won't have to teach his third son to be like the other two sons because the other two sons are like dad and dad is like his dad. We've all got a problem. It's a sin problem and it all stemmed from someone that refused instruction. God said, don't eat that tree over there. Now listen, listen to me, I'm I'm not trying to be mean, but if you're a diabetic and the doctor says, you cannot have a Hershey bar, what do you want more than anything in the world? Somebody help me, a Hershey bar. You may not even like chocolate, but you want a Hershey bar. Amen. That's the way we are. Beloved, listen. And without instruction, 
we, we make the mess. Hey, I'm gonna do this one for Miss Eve, even worser. It's one thing to be in a mess and it's another thing to be in a worser mess. Amen, I did that on purpose. I guess y'all know that. I hope so, the way you're chuckling anyway. Sometimes I don't do things on purpose. But listen to me. I'm telling you instruction is what we need. Correction is what we need. The Bible said in, in, in Proverbs 5, 12, and say, how have I hated instruction and my heart despised reproof? Reminds me, you know, you may have heard me tell this before. But I'll tell it again. There's a little boy standing up in the truck seat and his daddy said, sit down, son. And the little boy just kept standing there. And uh, his daddy said, son, sit down now. Little boy just kept standing there. And uh, his daddy said, son, I'm gonna pull this truck over and I'm gonna wear you out if you don't sit down. That little boy just, he sat down. He looked over at his dad and he said, dad, he said, what? He said, I'm sitting down on the outside, but I'm still standing up on the inside. <laughs> you say, what's the problem? I just read it in that verse of scripture, the heart. That's what the problem is, the heart. The heart doesn't want to receive the instruction that comes from God. Here in the Bible, God has given us a picture. Where is the Lord God of Elijah? It'll change your life if you'll see him in the instruction that he gives you in your life. See it not as, you know, a lot of times all people see, oh, that, I don't care what that preacher says. You can live with that. I can too. But you better care what God says if it's coming out of that book. You better care what God says. I can tell you that right now. I don't care what my daddy says. Well, you're wrong right there because the Bible said to honor your mother and father. You better care what they say. I'm telling you, beloved, there's a question. Where is the Lord God of Elijah? It's being answered. You can see him in a reflection in the chapter. The spirit of Elijah doth rest on Elisha. You say, preacher, what do you think? I tell you what I think. Starting from the pulpit and going to the pew. We need more of God's people in this world where the spirit of Elijah doth rest. Amen. Amen. Now listen to me carefully. I've taught this for years and I believe it's true. It's one thing to have the spirit of God in you. Every child of God has the spirit of God in them. If you don't have the Holy Spirit, you're none of his. That's what the Bible said, amen. If you left the altar without the Holy Ghost, you left without Jesus. You left without being saved. But beloved, if you got saved, then the Spirit of God instantly moved in. And it's one thing, listen, it's a great thing to have the Spirit of God in you. But let me tell you what a greater thing is. That's to have the Spirit of God on you. Where people, Brother Ted, when they look at us, it's not something physical they see but it's something they know. How many remembers when you were lost and you looked at some individual or listened to some, and you said, man, there's just something about them. Yeah. How many remembers thinking a thought like this, I wish I had what they have. Yeah. That's what we ought to be. We ought to be that child of God that receives instruction. Notice we looked at the negative first. I didn't want to finish with the negative but I wanted to finish with the positive. Listen, there are those that receive instruction. Let me just say this to you. No one ever got saved without re receiving instruction. You know what? Every one of us that got saved, we, we heard it. We understood it. The Bible said we're sinners. And you know what we did? We said, you know what, Lord? Maybe it's the first time in our life. But we said, you're right and I'm wrong. Ain't nobody ever gets saved saying they're right and God's wrong. We get saved saying, God, you're right and I'm wrong. And we receive instruction. And we understand that, that God's instruction doesn't point us to a priest, doesn't point us to a preacher, doesn't point us to a creed, but God's instruction points us to the cross of Jesus for our forgiveness. Listen to what the Bible said about those that receive instruction. 
Hear instruction and be wise and refuse it not. Proverbs 8.33. Proverbs 9.9, give instruction to a wise man, he will be yet wiser. Teach a just man and he will increase in learning. Proverbs 1.8, my son, hear the instruction of thy father and forsake not the law of thy mother. Proverbs 4.1, hear ye children the instruction of a father and attend to no understanding. Proverbs 4.13, take fast hold of instruction. Let her not go. Keep her, for she is thy life. Proverbs 19.20, hear counsel and receive instruction that thou mayest be wise in thy latter end. Proverbs 23.23, buy the truth and sell it not. Also wisdom and instruction and understanding. Paul told the young preacher, Brother Cold, he said, all scriptures given by inspiration of God and it's profitable for doctrine, for correction, for instruction in righteousness that the man of God, let me tell you something. Y'all may not know this, but there are many places you can go in the world today that are called church and that book will never be opened. I say, God help us. We need somebody to open this book. I don't apologize for verse after verse after verse after verse because this is what we need. The instruction from God's word. Beloved, I'm tell you something today. Where is the Lord God of Elijah? You'll find him. You'll find him in that reflection The spirit of Elijah doth rest on Elisha, but you'll find him in that instruction. Let me ask you something today. Are you wise or are you foolish? Are you one that receives instructions or are you one that refuses instruction? Now listen, my brother got saved up in Mountain City I'll be up there, Lord willing, at the prison on Tuesday, Tuesday morning. My brother got saved and we were talking on the phone one day and he, he said, Rick, he said, that Bible is so precious to me. He said, I call it my instruction manual. I had never heard the Bible called an instruction man, manual, Brother Grizzle, but that new convert that knew what it was to walk his own way for 40 years, had found great peace in walking God's way. He knew that the instruction that comes from self, the instruction that comes from Satan just leads down a road to hell. But he he understood one day that there was instruction that came from God. I know there's not another man in this building that does this. Not another man in this building. But have you ever, at Christmas time, you unboxed something for the kids that you and your wife had gotten for the children and you unboxed it and you took the instructions and you laid them over there. How many is with me? You got your screwdriver and you got your drill and you got your wrench. And some of you guys, you got a wife like mine. You better read them instructions. Some of you guys got a head like mine. You're too hard-headed to do what your wife says. Amen. And so you just get to go and you get to go and boy, you get right after it. I don't need them things. You get about two-thirds of the way through and you've got to disassemble everything you did. How many's with me this morning? There's always one thing that happens and I want her to go away when that happens. Just go. Amen. Just go. I'm gonna tell you something. We're talking about life. We're talking about death. We're talking about heaven. And we're talking about hell. We can't afford to lay the instructions over there on the table. You say, preacher, I'm saved. I ain't got nothing to worry about. We're still talking about life. 
We're still talking about death, Brother Steve. It's somebody else's life that's watching us. If there's no reflection of the Spirit of God in our life, then somebody else is failing to see God's mercy, God's grace, and God's love. I say this to you this morning as humbly as I know how. Please don't be a fool. Please don't despise God's instruction. Please receive. Don't refuse, but receive God's instruction for your life. Those men, what did the Bible say? Was there 50 of them there? Somebody paying attention? Was there 50 of them that went looking for Elijah? I bet you it wasn't too long. They were kind of feeling pretty foolish. We should have listened to that man of God. Brother Brian, you talked about your friend that come and visited and said, man, I ain't heard preaching like that since I was a boy. How many people are gonna drop off into hell where they sat in a service? Now, I'm not talking about your friend, but they come in a church and they heard the truth. They refused instruction. How many are, have dropped off into hell, Brother Grizzle, and said, I should have listened to that old man of God. I should have listened to that Bible. I shouldn't have been playing with my cell phone. I shouldn't have had my mind down at the steakhouse. I should have listened to that instruction that God loved me enough to send my way. When I was a teenager, I've told you this, I think. My first cousin, he was into drugs. He was into alcohol. He was into rock music. He was into the strobe lights and the posters and the black lights. I come home one day and I said, Dad, I want to paint my bedroom. What for, son? I said, well, I want to paint it black like Eddie's. He said, no, I don't think that's going to work, son. You ain't painting your bedroom black. And I thought my daddy was just such a prune. He's just not with it. When will he just let me be cool? Like my cousin. My cousin, because of foolishness and drugs, got hepatitis, was involved in a wreck. Grace of God, he lived. He was thrown out of the vehicle, out the back window, up the river a hundred feet and landed rocks on both sides, water on both sides and landed in the sandbar right in the middle and survived. Lost his leg clowning around in a steel mill and, and a sheet of metal fell down and cut his leg off. All I'm saying is at the time, Brother Gail, I didn't have sense enough at the time to understand that my daddy loved me. I did not have sense enough to know he wasn't against me, he was for me. He wasn't trying to hurt me, he was trying to help me. And I'll tell you today, I'm glad the day come. I tell everybody I was 13 and I thought my daddy was dumber in a coal bucket. And when I was 23, I found out I was the one that's carrying the bucket. Daddy knew a lot more than I give him credit for. Amen. And beloved, let me tell you this. That book has got a lot more instruction in it than we Amen. give it credit for. It will help us. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. We're going to either receive instruction or we're going to refuse instruction. How will it be in your life? Let's bow for prayer today. Father, thank you this morning for the privilege. Lord, the privilege to open the Bible. No, dear Lord, it, it is the Bible. It is the word of the living God. I pray, dear Lord, today that you would manifest your presence, Lord. Manifest your presence, Lord, here in this invitation today. 
Maybe there's a person here today, Lord, that up until this point in their life, they've refused instruction. They've went their own way. They've done their own thing. But God, today, may it be the day that somebody says enough of me, enough of my way. Lord, I want your way in my life. I no longer want to refuse instruction, but I want to receive instruction. I want that spirit that rested on Elijah to rest on me that others might know that you've made a difference in my life. Lord, I pray today that you'd help us as your children. Lord, many, many people here in this room They have no doubt that heaven will be their home when they leave this world. I pray, God, that you'd help us to be an influence in someone else's life. We can't save them, Lord. Lord, you said one man sows, another waters, but God gives the increase. We can follow your instruction. I pray we'd do that. Our heads are bowed, our eyes are closed just before we sing in the invitation.